in the last year and a half, I am again raising the issue of the serious, chronic, and worsening situation at Sligo University Hospital regarding the numbers on tallies and waiting for beds. Now, there's no shortage of statistics, thanks to Trolley Watch. And while I know numbers fluctuate day on day, I think if we look at the trends, we'll see what's happening. So if we look at this year, 2022, from January to August, we see that compared to all other hospitals, SUH started off in January as the fifth worst, and as the year progressed, it went from fourth to third. And when we get to August, because that's the last full month, we see that it was in the fourth worst position, and we know the figures in September show a distinct disimprovement. But Connie, the headline figures for the, the month of August, which show Sligo with 720 people waiting, do not tell the full story. Because what you need to do is look at the capacity of any hospital, the number of beds, the staff, because that to a large extent determines how it can manage those waiting on beds. And if we look at August of this year and compare Sligo with Limerick, for example, which is meant to be perhaps one of the worst hospitals from the perspective of those on trolleys and waiting for beds, and compare the bed capacities, what we actually see is that Sligo is the worst of all of the hospitals in the country. Now, that's the measure of the real challenge that's facing SUH. Not the headline figures, which are screaming at us at this stage. And I'm sure, Tanish, that, that you're well familiar with this issue, not just from my interventions, but your own local councillors and government TDs, some of whom described the situation recently as truly shocking. And they're right, Tanish, that the situation is truly shocking and it is completely unacceptable. And the situation, while it's worsening, has not crept up on us by stealth. It has worsened year on year, and if you look at the figures back from 2006, you'll see that, that those figures are getting worse year on year. All hospitals have an increase, but Sligo is the worst. So that's furnished that why I'm asking you today for an immediate, short-term response for this. Plans about a 42 bedded unit, we're waiting on that. But we need immediate action. The hospital is under severe pressure. Staff are under huge stress, suffering burnout. COVID tested all of us, but healthcare staff more than most. So what I'm asking is, as we face an uncertain winter and spring, COVID and flu, Tanishta, what short term measures can you put in place? Uh, um, Deputy Harkin for raising uh, this important question and for raising uh, Sligo University Hospital again here in the Dáil. I know she's raised it many times in the House and has spoken to me offline about it as well. Uh, according to the HSC this morning, there are seven patients on trolleys in the emergency department in Sligo, but it has been much higher uh, on other days and indeed recent days. And I do acknowledge the Deputy's point uh, that 10 people on trolleys in a small department uh, like NACE or Portiuncula, for example, uh, is worse than 10 in a very large department, for example, like St James's or St Vincent's, and I think that, that is a valid point that the Deputy makes, and I acknowledge it. Uh, in terms of short-term actions, the HSC at the moment is preparing its comprehensive winter plan, and that will include bespoke local plans for uh, Sligo University Hospital and the community healthcare area uh, of which it is part. Um, it's being finalised at the moment and will be brought to government very shortly. In the meantime, funding has been provided for actions to take place this year. Uh, that includes uh, GP and out-of-hours support, extension of the local injury units operating hours, transition care funding and short-stay respite services. Across the country, the HSC has been instructed to recruit an additional 51 emergency medicine consultants, including on a locum basis if necessary. Attendances in Sligo have been very high relative to the predicted range for September and the HSC is acting to alleviate congestion by prioritising diagnostics to get people discharged more quickly and also using day services. Uh, also, elective uh, has been paired back, unfortunately, but that was necessary uh, to six beds uh, over the past uh, number, number of months. Um, in the past two years, additional capacity has been provided, uh, including 41 public intermediate care beds to uh, Sligo, uh, also an extension of the emergency department, um, which has provided a new reception area, a uh, COVID assessment area, 
a separation of adult and child waiting rooms, a new, new, tri new nurse triage area, uh, and an ambulance arrival area which opened back in January. MO on the 28th of September branded SUH a safety hazard. That's not politics, that's not me. And they don't do that lightly. That's where we are at the moment. And they called for an urgent inspection by HICWA because of the increased overcrowding and the safety issues for patients and staff. And I hear what you say about diagnostics, and that will work in two, three years' time. That will feed into the system. And I hear what you say about the 51 emergency consultants. How many of those will be coming to Sligo? It's my understanding that there's four ICU beds in Sligo not opened because the HSE are not sanctioning the required staff. Did Budget 2023 ensure those 30 additional staff needed for SUH? I mean, this is what we want to hear. I don't expect you to wave a magic wand today and those waiting on beds disappear tomorrow. But I want to see some kind of immediate action taken so that the people who will be attending that hospital and that those who work on it know that some support will be in place for this winter and next spring. Um, thanks, Deputy. Uh, as I mentioned in my earlier reply, a winter plan is being developed at the moment, and there will be a bespoke winter plan for Sligo, uh, taking into account not just the hospital, but also the community services and the wider uh, area that it, um, uh, that, that, that it works in. Um, diagnostics can actually help quite soon. Um, I know from um, bitter experience, both as a doctor and as a Minister for Health, that very often patients are uh, waiting a long time in hospitals, particularly over weekends, uh, to get the scans of the tests that they need, um, and then waiting for a senior decision maker to make a decision as to whether or not they need to stay or can, can go home. Uh, so just having more diagnostics, particularly at the evening, at weekends, and having senior decision makers on site uh, can speed up uh, your, your, your services. Um, and just reducing the average length of stay by half a day uh, can be as good as providing um, dozens or hundreds of additional beds uh, across, across the health service. Uh, so you need to do all of these things, um, improve average length of stay, but also provide additional bed capacity and staff capacity. Uh, as you did mention, there are plans for a new four-storey block for the hospital. Uh, that will include 42 new beds, uh, as well as uh, additional staffing for critical care. And that's needed as soon as possible. I know Minister Fian, um is working very hard on this. I know you are too. Uh, and we need to get that um, underway as soon as, as soon as is possible, but also to make those short-term changes as well.